This is the Artillery Sidewinder X1. While packed with features, it definitely has its flaws. Is it any good? Let's find out. Is this thing going to burn down my house? Or does this really work? In order to find out, let's open the box. My first impressions look really promising. The printer comes packed with a high density foam. Once inside we can find some quality checks, a manual, how to set up your slicer, a power cord and a bag full of spare parts. By the way, if you like what I'm doing, consider subscribing, give me a like and talk to me in the comment box. I love to read your comments and I try to answer all of your questions. Inside the bag we can find a USB stick, some USB cables, some bolts, a wrench, some spare parts and some spare ribbon cables. The gantry is secured with two bolts on each side. Next we got the spool holder which holds the filament runout sensor. One of the cables got pinched, but after some testing it still works. Start to connect all your cables. Push in the ribbon cable all the way. Clean the rods with some degreaser and oil them in with a thin oil. Under the tools section there's a move button. Let's try it out. Now we have to do some quality checks. And yep, these aren't turned in all the way. The mount is crooked, but nothing you can't fix. Do a simple bolt check, and I mean every bolt, to make sure we're getting good print results. This assembly is really easy. It's all kept together with some bolts. As you can see there's already been printed. After some googling I found out that the factory does a test print. It looks like there was a little gap between the heat brake and the nozzle. Let's clear the clock and start mounting everything together.
To make sure there's no gap between the nozzle and the heat break, you need to leave a little bit of room between the nozzle and the heat block. Then screw in the heat break all the way, but don't over tighten. Inside the heat brake there is a PTFE tube. In order to protect it from melting, I'm using some thermal paste to dissipate the heat better. There are tons of benefits from buying from China, but quality checks isn't one of them. So I would open the bag and look if all your wired connections are secured. Then we got the ribbon cables. While a great design, it has its flaws. It's very fragile, but hey, the customer support was awesome. I sent them an email through customer support and two weeks later, ta-da, new ribbon cable. I'm three months in with this printer and this was the first and last time I had troubles with my ribbon cables. Now heat up your printer to 200 degrees and tighten up the nozzle. That's why you needed to leave a little gap between the nozzle and the heat block. While the heated bed heats up very fast, it has its problems. First, it's a glass coated bed that gets to temperature very well in the middle, but the sides, it's a bit random. There's a, some kind of nasty coating on the bed that needs to be wiped off before use. IPA works just fine. Then last but not least, if you follow the forums on Facebook, that everybody has some kind of warping of its bed. This isn't a huge deal and can easily be fixed with mesh bed leveling or this BL touch. On the USB stick there is a test print, the Q. And I must say I was very impressed with my first ever print. It comes off fairly easy with a little tap. No huge layer lines and the brim comes off easily. So I started to print more. This Deadpool bust is amazing. Thank you.
and I tested my profiles on some benches. From the right to the left, the worst results and the last one is my best results. The last two are looking very promising. I designed my own headset stand. It enabled me to make my own reverse engineered bike mounted phone case. Not only this, it's printed with TPU so it's nice and flexible. And I took some time to design my own ammunition box. To test out the fine detail of this printer, I printed three versions of this Deadpool. A 0.2 layer and a 0.12 layer. I took the worst and the best version and started to prime them without any sanding. Then, after some base color, we took the time to paint them. And wow, look at this. The left one is a fine model with a 0.12 layer line and even the bad one looks decent. While the sidewinder isn't perfect, it definitely enabled me to build things I could only dream of. There are a buttload of upgrades available, and most of them are free and printable on Thingiverse. Maybe that's something for the next video. Alright my dudes, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.